They self-admitted that the banking system is a Ponzi scheme. How does that have any bearing whatsoever on my financial future? I don't understand why anyone thinks that's relevant. I really don't see the applicability to my financial life. Holy crap, I already know what the result's gonna be. I've already won the game. How amazing is that? And that's the question is what problem are we trying to solve? The money that I make is directly correlated to the value and impact that I made in people's lives because we do it the right way. The more so. money you make, the more value you provide. Never put your money into anything you don't understand. It's how you behave with the product, it's how you act, and it's who you become in the process to actually accomplish the goals that you want to accomplish. Okay, so now we've gotten to the point where Peter and I had gotten to in our series. Now we're getting to the new part where he's going to show you some alternatives to infinite banking that actually work. And um, okay. actually, some of the, some of what he proposes here is actually good. I got to give him okay. credit. Uh, and cool. shows that he actually somewhat understands what we're trying to accomplish with infinite banking. So the first one is kind of his ham-fisted attempt at a strategy I think you and I both believe in. And, and you, it'll become obvious pretty quickly what I'm talking about, right? So I don't disagree necessarily mm -hmm. with his alternatives here but you yeah. can do both of course you don't it's not an either or scenario but okay infinite banking alternative the first infinite banking alternative is only available to certain people people with debt or a mortgage works best this in no way means you need to go into debt so you can use this strategy the next strategy is a variation of this strategy when no debt is necessary the only reason why i start with this strategy is because it can generate a larger return for some people and it also helps you get out of debt faster Here's how this strategy works. You will need a mortgage and line of credit. You move a portion of your regular mortgage to the line of credit. Your regular mortgage is now paid down a bit more than it would have been. Instead of keeping more than a token amount in your checking account to pay bills, you will drop the money into the line of credit. You now pay no interest since that amount is no longer borrowed. When you need money to pay bills, you can transfer money from the line of credit back to your checking account. Your rate of return on your everyday float is the rate of interest on the mortgage. So this is a very, very, very ham-fisted, okay? Um, mm -hmm. but let me explain what he's trying to say, even though he's making a mess of it. I agree yeah. with this strategy. Uh, well, yep. let me finish reading. So he says, caution, if your line of credit has a higher interest rate than your mortgage, the strategy runs into problems. Actually, that's not true. When interest rates were very low for a decade, the strategy worked better. If your mortgage has a higher rate, you can still use this strategy as long as the line of credit interest rate is similar or lower than your mortgage interest rate. So he doesn't understand the difference between amortized mortgage, or sorry, amortized interest and simple interest. Yep. So this strategy actually does work, even if the line of credit interest rate is higher than your mortgage. Okay. So yeah. I'm take I'm going to take this to it. So he's saying, take out a line of credit and use it to chunk down payments on your mortgage. You can actually take that a step further yep. and do what it's called velocity banking. Chris familiar with this strategy? I am. I think it's a great strategy and it is analogous to infinite banking, although it's not the same. Okay. So what you're going to do is replace your mortgage with a first lien HELOC, home equity line of credit, and then run your cash flow through that first lien HELOC. You'll end up paying off your house in a much more efficient manner and you'll have a much more efficient cash flow management tool Okay, because the line of credit yep. only charges simple interest, whereas the mortgage charges amortized interest. And we don't have time to explain all of velocity banking here, but right, I, right, I, right. I, I'm, I'm going to give him credit for bringing this up because it shows me he does sort of understand what we're trying to accomplish with infinite banking. Because it is true mm -hmm. that a lot of the same benefits from infinite banking you can get from velocity bank. What you're doing is you're running your income into an asset that appreciates mm -hmm. your house. Uh -huh. And then you're borrowing against that house using a line right. of credit. Meanwhile, your house keeps going up in value. You keep benefiting sure. from equity buildup. Okay. But that they're but they're not the same thing either. Like you, no, they're not mutually they're... exclusive of each other. Like you can do infinite banking and velocity banking at the same yep. time. Yep. And here's the difference. So what's the difference between velocity banking and infinite banking? Okay. Infinite banking is about control. Uh -huh. So when you run your money through your home equity line of credit who has control not the you the bank sets the terms of borrowing against the line of credit right okay and they are in control that's yep. the that's the first and the main difference when you take out a policy loan against your whole life insurance policy you have control you decide what the repayment terms are it's completely up to you so that's yep. the first main difference and there are many, but the two main ones is that. And the second one is 
your house is not guaranteed to grow in value every year, right? If you borrow against your house, you could yep. run into trouble, right? Sure. Could yeah. be issues. Go back to 2007 and eight. See how it goes. Yeah. Whereas your whole life insurance policy is guaranteed to go up every year. So it's totally safe leverage when you're borrowing against it because the collateral is pristine. It's guaranteed. So velocity banking is analogous to infinite banking. And I think it's a great complementary strategy. And I want to give him credit because I, I agree with him on this strategy. I'm not disagreeing with him. I think he yeah. isn't explaining it very well. And he's yeah. doing it in a limited sense. Take it yeah. to its logical conclusion. Just get rid of the mortgage altogether. And he shows again, he doesn't understand what the numbers mean. He claims right. this only works if the line of credit charges well, a lower interest rate than your mortgage. Well, that'll never happen. A line of credit is always going to charge a higher interest rate. And the reason yeah. why they have to do that is because they're only charging you simple interest. So if well, they charge you yeah. a lower interest rate, they couldn't be profitable on it, right? And that's that's what we were talking about with the whole life insurance loan too, is is when you're when you're dealing with simple interest, if you're always managing the the loan expenses and your your from a cash flow perspective, you're imp impacting the loan balance. You're really impacting the effective loan interest rate. If you want, you, you there are ways that you can figure out like, you know, I'm paying a four and a half percent mortgage, but I'm paying six percent on a simple interest loan. Well, depending on how the how you cash flow that six percent simple interest loan, the effective rate is probably going to be lower than the four and a half percent, or it can yep. be lower, right? And so. Once again, it's not all the same. And he's talking about them like they're apples and apples and they're apples and oranges. Right. And I could pull up a spreadsheet yeah. and show you how the first lien HELOC with a significantly higher interest rate than the amortized yeah. mortgage yeah. will give you much more efficient and effective pay down schedule. Totally. But I also want to go back to earlier in the in the article, he made a lot of promises that he promised you, Chris. Oh, he says there's no free lunch in whole life insurance, no. but he promises you with his strategy, you do get a free lunch. So- he shows, so back up here, I want to show his promises. Um, okay. So once I expose the fatal flaws within the infinite banking concept, I will share a strategy that actually delivers on the promises of infinite banking without the need of a bank or insurance company. Mm. There are no products to buy and I will sell you nothing. You keep all the money. Without hmm. the need of a bank or an insurance company. All right. Right. Okay. So to take out a home equity line of credit, you go to a bank. You and you need a bank. Wait, was this was this velocity <laughs> banking? The was this the, his cell? Yes. Was this his yes. Point? Oh yes. wow! So he's just like a liar. So he said, without the need of a bank. Well, you need a bank to take out a line. Where of are you going to get a line of credit without a bank? I want to know this. Or insurance company. Well, let me ask you this, Chris. If you're going to take out a line of credit on, against your house, will they allow you to not have homeowners insurance? No. Nope. You need to have an insurance company involved. They're yep. absolutely, that must be insured. You must have a insurance. Of so you need both. So with his strategy, you need both a bank and an insurance company, right? Yeah. There yeah. are no products to buy. Okay, well, you're buying a HELOC. That, that's a product, a home equity line yeah, of credit. From last I saw, anytime you do a HELOC, there's closing rates, You know, there's interest rates you're paying for. Those are all costs of and purchasing a product. Pre prepare yourself for this one, Chris. The mortgage broker who sold you that HELOC, he makes a commission mm -hmm. on the sale of that product to you. I know, I know. I mean, that's just evil, isn't it? Whenever yeah, someone makes a commission, we know they're probably evil. a scam totally artist. Evil. Totally evil. Right? It's, it's so yeah, oil. a whole life insurance money. agent makes a commission when he sells you your policy. Guess what? When you take out a mortgage or a HELOC, whoever sold you that makes a commission. And you're paying for that indirectly. One yep. way or another, you're paying for yep. that. And guess what? When you use the HELOC, you get charged interest. That goes to the bank, not to you. That's funny. Okay. So yep. all of the supposed negatives you're talking about in infinite banking exist here as well. The question okay. is always is as compared to what? Yep. You're using a bank and an insurance company. There's a commission paid. There are closing fees when you buy this product. And there are ongoing fees in terms of the interest you're paying. So I don't see how he solved any of the supposed flaws in infinite banking. I see how he's just mm -hmm. multiplied them. Right. With whole life insurance, we don't have a we don't need a bank. Yeah. That loan doesn't come from a bank. It comes from the insurance company. I have control over it. I decide if, when, how I want to pay it back. Right. Yeah. For what it's worth, the interest rate on a policy loan is going to be lower than a line of credit. Sure. What that's yeah. worth. Right? Yeah. 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 So I mean, I, I don't see how he's delivered on any of these promises. Yeah. yeah he no, didn't deliver on any promises. Money. 
You don't keep all the money. The bank gets some. They have to. In, in order for this to be a profitable product, they have to make some money. Okay. We got to stop with this Marxist logic, this Marxist envy that when someone, when you pay someone or they charge you a fee, that's evil. It's exploitative, Chris. When someone sells you a product and they make a profit off you, right. they exploited you. Yeah. It's like, no, they provided you a service. This yeah. is a win-win scenario, yeah. right? So I'm not accusing the bank of doing anything evil. That's good business. You want the bank you're working with to be profitable, right? If the bank fails- I, Yeah, I mean, you don't want them failing. Do? Yeah. Look at, look, at, look at just last year in 2023, like, all the bank failures that happened, if you go back through and you and you look at the records of why the banks failed, it was because uh, a shortfall of new deposits, right? And so that's, for whatever reason, you know, like you don't want those banks to fail. If you're a, a, a client there, you don't want those banks to fail because then you pay the price. The FDIC has to bail them out and all these different things. But furthermore, like you're never going to have that issue with a whole life insurance company by keeping your money in a whole life policy. And you're going to have access to that money. They don't use fractional reserve banking. They actually use solid Austrian economics. That's, that's the foundation kind of that. The reason I always say is like people struggle with their money is because their money's not in alignment with their values and beliefs. And there's too many people that believe in Austrian economics that have their money in banks. Right. And when you, when you look at that, to me, if th that, Last year, when the when the banks failed, the I think there were five banks that failed last year in this time frame, and all of them basically pointed to the reason we failed is because there was a we didn't have enough new deposits to keep the system going. They self admitted that the banking system is a Ponzi scheme. If we don't get new money to pay the old people out, we're going to fail. That is a Ponzi scheme by definition. Yet nobody called it out. Like, it's crazy to me. Like, nobody in the media is calling it out. I did a video on it back then, but I think it got, like, shadow banned or something. Like, it was it was crazy. It didn't get, right. like, an By the way, there's a guy, I think his name is Tan Lu. Yeah. Wrote a book about how the stock market became mm. a Ponzi scheme. How do stocks go up? More buying comes in. Yeah. That's how stocks go up. That's by demand. definition a Ponzi scheme, right? Yeah, I mean, all you have to do is go down, go back to 1980 and look at the earnings per share on average from stocks and look at the earnings per share now. And it's it's like there's a, a, a multiple factor higher now than there was back then because it's just all supply and demand. Um, that they use earnings per share as a major metric to sell and like when is the market healthy and not healthy. Um, but it's all relative to, you know, the time frame that we're talking about. You know, it's like everybody likes to talk about the stock market being the best place to go because the S&P 500 dividend, you know, including dividend returns, you can average over 8%, you know, over, you know, since the 1920s to today, even though it's up and down, if you just reinvest the dividends, you're good. Well, if you take the returns from 1980 to 1999 away, that 8% goes down to like the high fours. That's how that, because... From 1980 to 1999, the stock market averaged 13.46%, right? Mm -hmm. And that doesn't even include the dividend returns. So when you when you when you start counting the dividend returns in that, you're probably in the 15% range. That drives the number, the averages way up. And you, when you look at why the averages during that time were so high, is because 401ks were created, supply and demand for investments, you know, got way out of whack. The average Main Street investor just got dumped into the 401k market. It drove prices up. We had interest rates in 1980 that were at 19% and they went down. So when you reduce interest rates, it creates stimulus in the economy. People have more money to invest and spend and all this stuff. People spend money. Their consumer confidence was up. Wages went up. Every, like, it was the perfect storm. And then we had the technology bubble with the dot-com bubble uh, you know, that happened in, in, you know, at that point in time. And so... Everything during that 20 year window was perfect. It went absolutely perfect for these numbers and for a whole generation to benefit as long as they didn't get massacred in 2000, which most of them did, you know. Um, but like, if we, a lot of people that say the stock market is proven, I say, okay, go take out 1980 to 1999 and tell me the numbers then and tell me how proven it is. And now tell me, take that little bubble, literal bubble of an, of an environment that will never be repeated 
Take that period of time out of history and tell me the results of the other 80 years. Tell me those results. Now compare it to what we're talking about. And now tell me who's crazy. Right, right. And my response is always, in what on what planet is the average of some artificially created metric like the S&P 500? How does that have yeah. any bearing whatsoever on my financial future? Yeah. I, I, I don't understand why anyone thinks that's relevant. I no. really don't see the applicability to my no. financial life. I don't see it. No. I got you it. might as well tell me what the gambling odds of a sports game that happened 20 years ago was. Why why does that have any impact on, on, on your life? Time, you know? Okay, so I want to share quickly, since he brought up velocity banking, and he yeah. I want to share real quickly. Okay. okay. So this is the first lean HELOC calculator. I am a, an official ambassador for this program because I believe in it. So the okay. alternative strategy he's proposing is a good one especially if you have a mortgage. And I want to address, again, numbers. He's saying this only works if the interest rate on your mortgage is higher than the interest rate on the line of credit. Because you mm. see, Chris, if the line of credit has a lower interest rate, you'll pay less interest. Well, yeah. let's take a look, th look at this example, okay? Mortgage versus HELOC, okay? So you have a $305,000 mortgage at 2.6% amortized mm -hmm. interest versus a uh, home equity line of credit at 7.75% simple interest. That's like 300% so higher. Most people would look at that and say, that's crazy. Why mm -hmm. would I take out this home equity line of credit when the interest rate is like more than triple what this interest rate is? How can this possibly be better? Well, it's because this is simple interest, whereas this is amortized interest. And we're using this as our cash flow management tool. So in this example, this person has monthly net income of $12,000, monthly expenses of $5,000, not including your housing payment. Keep that in mind, right? Because mm -hmm. we're replacing your mortgage with a HELOC, your mortgage payment goes away. Mm -hmm. So your monthly expenses, just remove. we just removed probably your largest monthly expense. Right. So think about what that would do for your cash flow. Yep. Right? So here's what happens. And then we got homeowners insurance, property taxes. Here's what happens. The mortgage, of course, it takes you 30 years to pay it off. You end up paying $136,000 in interest. Interest you pay as a percentage of principal is 45%. But wait, I thought it was a 2.625% interest rate, Chris. Well, that's, <laughs> that's amortized interest. That's yeah. amortized interest. Okay. With a HELOC, charging 7.75%. We pay it off in five years. We save twelve hundred dollars in monthly cash flow, mm -hmm. and we pay sixty three thousand dollars in interest, as opposed to one hundred and thirty six thousand. The equivalent thirty year amortized mortgage rate we're paying here would be one point three percent. So good. if we wanted to make an apples to apples comparison in terms of the interest rate on a mortgage versus the interest rate on this HELOC, it so would be. 1.3%, right? And to that point, what I want to say is when you borrow against a whole life policy, the interest rate works the same way as a line of credit, right? Like right. The, it's simple, it's interest. simple interest. So you cannot just look at the rate and compare it to a mortgage rate or a car loan rate or anything. It's not apples to apples. Yep. Yep. So, um, well, I don't want to go too deep into it because I don't no, know. No, it's amazing though. I think that's it's, great. It's a rabbit hole. But, but, yeah, but yeah. again, it gets back to your point. If we're going to compare numbers, we've got to be disciplined about understanding where those numbers came from. What are the assumptions yeah. behind them? So we truly have an apples to apples comparison, For right? Sure. And usually what yeah. you find is these numbers, people skip straight over the assumptions behind the numbers. Yeah. And so their numbers may be internally consistent, but if you're myopically focused yeah. on what's the rate of return of my cash value only in the early years, uh, you're looking it's, at it, 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 you're looking at it from the worst possible perspective. To, whether you realize it or not, you're myopically focused on the one drawback to whole life insurance, which is yes, that's, there is a loss of liquidity in the early years. That is true. That is yeah. a drawback. I'm not yeah. denying it. Yep. There, there are no free lunches. and. There are no free lunches. He's right. And the, 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 the expense is the early liquidity crunch that you have. Like, that's just it. That is the drawback. If you're willing to give a little liquidity up, 
for the first several years for the benefit of all the long-term benefits that we talk about. Like yep. question yep. you have to ask yourself is, is it worth it? And I'm not here to sell anybody anything. It's like, if you think it's worth it, cool. If it's not, cool. Good luck. Go do something else. So here we go. He's got another alternative for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, another one. The second infinite banking alternative anyone can use. Infinite banking as promoted by insurance agents is designed as a big savings account you can borrow from. Your original money keeps earning even when borrowed out to you while the borrowed funds are invested in other income producing assets, the so-called double dip. Now that Which I showed. Is too bad. That isn't actually too bad. I would say borrow against rather than borrow from. Yeah. Yep. But that's actually not too bad in terms of explaining it, how you could use it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the bottom line, we showed that it does happen. That's like at year 20 when we showed whether you borrow against it or leave the money in there, it's going to be the same way. So it's growing all the while, no matter what. Right. As we saw above, the insurance company is not the warm, fuzzy entity handing out free money. Your that's... money is still growing because you are paying interest on the loan of your own money. No, we show that's not the case. Um, it grows regardless. We show and you're that. not paying the interest on the loan of your own money. You're leveraging your own money for collateral. Right. And the insurance company is giving you a loan. That's what it is. And of course, he has to do the straw man. The insurance mm -hmm. company is not the warm, fuzzy entity handing out free money. Yeah. Well, who's yeah, yeah. Like whoever claimed that. <laughs> like, uh, all right. There that. are some agents out there that are trying to position it like that. And those agents should be fired. But like, you know. But if Most you're gonna make a that. coherent argument, yeah, like, you, you can't just oh let me, I could take any financial strategy mm -hmm. and cherry pick some video on YouTube. Oh that's yeah, like yeah, ridiculous yeah. things about it, and cherry pick some scummy. I could find some scummy realtor saying all sorts of ridiculous things. Yeah, about for realtor. sure. Yeah, and then from that conclude that real estate is a terrible investment and it's a scam, right? 100%, 100%. Like that's ridiculous. Okay. Yep. If you're going to criticize a strategy, then you owe it to yourself and your audience to pick someone who acts as an authority figure on it, explains it well, and presents it in the best possible light, right? Yep. If you're going to be honest, as opposed to straw man. Okay. If you eliminate the insurance company and invest the same monies, you will have more because you don't have middlemen to pay. And the interest rate is probably paid is probably higher, depending on current interest rates. With this in mind, Treasury Direct is an excellent tool for building wealth with your excess funds earmarked for savings mm -hmm. and those state income taxes. By purchasing short-term T-bills directly from the U.S. Treasury, your money is always liquid. You can withdraw your money at any time. You can always call it borrowing out your own money if you want. Um, no, withdrawing your money <laughs> is not the same as borrowing against. It is a completely different thing. Yeah, when you withdraw your money, it's not earning for you anymore. Whereas when you collateralize your cash value and borrow against it, it's still earning for you. Big, right. big, 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 big difference. Completely different thing altogether. Okay. The same concept works with money market accounts at financial institutions, banks, or credit unions. Wait a minute. I thought no, he said we didn't need a bank. I thought he said we didn't need a bank in his strategy. Ah, that's funny. Yeah. Here we go again. Right? And it doesn't work the same because as soon as you withdraw money from a money market account, you're no longer earning interest on that money, period. Right. And if the bank is paying you 4%, you better believe the bank is making more. Yep. So you are there are fees. You are paying directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. totally. So yeah, you're buying a product. A money market account is a product from a bank. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't see that you've met your promise. And no, you don't keep all the money, right? If they're paying you 4%, they're making more. Therefore, they're keeping some of your money. That's how they make profits. They wouldn't give you the product if it wasn't profitable to them, okay? Right. There's nothing evil or nefarious about that. That's just how markets work, okay? Totally. I have no problem with people profiting from me, right? Yep, yep. I, I, don't, I don't envy them and feel like they stole money from me. They provided me a service, and I want that. I yep. want them to be profitable, the businesses I'm totally. working with. That way, they can keep offering me better and better products, right? It's a win-win totally. -win scenario. Yep. It's not a win-lose scenario. This guy views every economic relationship as exploitative, and that is pure Marxism. Yeah, everything's zero sum, win lose to him, and right. like, yeah, it's not really the world we operate in. Here is the magic of infinite banking: when you borrow your own money, you also pay yourself an interest rate. That is how the insurance company gets you to believe you are magically growing your wealth, even while money is out on call. Borrow. You are not paying yourself an interest rate. Let's be real clear about that. You are paying the interest rate to the insurance company while simultaneously 
earning an interest rate on the money you collateralized. So Correct. let me just clarify that. Okay, go ahead. Correct. Correct. Again, it's always a straw man argument, right? Yeah, I know. I know. I just... In a nutshell, this is the sinking. You pay interest as if it were a loan when you pull money from the fund. The infinite banking people want you to think this is only available from them, but it is such a simple concept. Think Occam's razor. Anyone can do it, and insurance has nothing to do with it, structured or not. Okay, well, well, it is a simple concept. I, I agree, although it's hard. It doesn't make it easy to grasp. But it is kind of challenging to grasp, um, and uh, but it is ultimately simple. And it I will simple. acknowledge that you could, in theory, use other vehicles. Like it, it, it has nothing necessarily to do with insurance. Yeah. Whole life insurance, I think, and you think, happens to be the ideal vehicle for doing this, because again, it's about control. When you're using policy loans from your whole life insurance policy or against your whole life insurance policy, you have control over the borrowing yeah. terms. Yeah. Other forms of borrowing may be great, like real estate investors borrow against their properties all the time. That can be phenomenal. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying right. there's now a bank that's setting the terms of those loans, right? Yep. So yeah, once I again, mean, missing the intangible benefit of having control. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's it's like anything else. Is like I think the thing I love about the infinite banking concept is like you get to create a guaranteed result of what you want to happen. You can purchase. I I always say you buy your net worth, you build your cash flow. So when you buy your net worth with the policy, you know that it's there forever because it's permanent life insurance. And no matter what happens, to me, that's freedom to gamify the rest of your life. That's freedom to say, hey. I know that I'm doing this because I'm married. I got three kids and I have business partners and I have a community of people that depend on me. So if something happens to me, what is my li human life value? What, what do I want to create? And, and I say, all right, I could buy term insurance for 10 years and have it locked in place. But what if I get cancer eight years from now or, or you know, 10 years from now and, and I, do, I live through that 10 year term window? Now, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm screwed. My whole plan, my whole goal for life is now thrown on its head. By doing a whole life insurance, I have the ability to guarantee a specific result. I can buy that net worth. I can build my cash flow. And, and in doing so, now what I've done is I've able to, like, I've gamified my life to an extent where now it's just like, holy crap, like, I already know what the result's going to be. I've already won the game. How amazing is that? Now right. I can just go out right. and have fun and move to the Dominican Republic and buy a hotel and launch a private equity fund and do all these things. You know what I mean? And like, He's my Make up money guy. and help people get, you know, returns on investment because of the fact like life should be fun. So, and you, you know, he, like we should be able to bring other people up with us. Right. He's myopically focused on the cash value. What you're pointing yeah. out is let's look at year one in this policy. You just purchased a $2.9 million legacy. It's not life yeah. insurance. Yeah. So what you're pointing out is, I just started a self-completing plan to save $2.9 yep. million. No matter yep. what happens to me, that result is guaranteed. Yep. This is why you cannot compare $2.9 million of term, which will never pay out in 98% of cases, versus $2.9 million of whole life, which is guaranteed to pay out. You didn't buy At life a minimum. Insurance. Yeah, and it's going. And you can see as the death benefit goes up, or as the cash value goes up, the death benefit goes up because you always got that, effectively always have that $2.9 million there. Which is great. So you did not purchase life insurance. You purchased a death benefit. It's a guaranteed payout. It's a guaranteed yep. result, right? So in it. infinite banking, we're looking at the death benefit too. The death benefit is absolutely yep. part of the picture. You can't ignore it, right? People who don't understand infinite banking just get myopically focused on the cash value. They don't understand the cash value is the net present value, that future death benefit, okay? And so we started a self-completing plan to save $2.9 million dollars. And that'll happen either while we're alive or after we're dead, or potentially when we have some health issues and we can start advancing ourselves that death yep. benefit, right? Yep. So, um, yeah. Okay. So I, I think it, we're man. almost done here. This is a, always painful to get through this stuff. It's always very painful. I'm kind of like, ah. Oh, it's done. Oh, at least he put a link to my video. That's nice oh, of him. What if I need life insurance? Well, uh, you don't need life insurance. You don't yep. need any financial product, in fact. Okay. All right. Some people looking at infinite banking realize they have a temporary need for life insurance. Term life is the perfect solution to a temporary need for protecting against the loss of a breadwinner. Wait, Chris, I thought he told us he wasn't going to sell us anything. Mm -hmm. It sounds like he's trying to sell me yeah. term life insurance. <laughs> there are uh, far fewer reasons for permanent life insurance. 
Key man insurance and this part of a buy-sell agreement come to mind as a possible good reason to purchase a permanent life insurance policy. In conclusion, there are no good reasons to engage infinite banking. It is a fancy term coined to sell high-priced life insurance with ample commissions to the agent and massive profits to the insurance company. So here we go again with the scarcity mindset. It's evil mm -hmm. to make profits. It's evil for you to make a commission. Like when these insurance companies make money, they're stealing from you. It's evil. You know, of course, if you go to a bank and take out a line of credit, like he's suggesting, or put your money in their money market funds, they're not making any profits. Right. No, no, no. That, that's just a charity. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know how to say this like nicely. The only thing I can say is like my only concern with people like this is he's, he's either like, I can understand how people first get exposed to it and they need to learn and they don't understand certain concepts or whatever. But if you're in the business to the point where you're writing a hit piece like this, my my only feedback can be he's too simple minded to understand it. And maybe it's just not for him, you know, because if he doesn't get it, if uh, if it, if the like, I don't understand how it's too complex but like if he doesn't understand the difference between amortized uh you know debt and simple interest debt if he doesn't really get the difference between those and he's going to write a thing where that's like one of the key pieces of the argument if he doesn't understand the cost of capital you know and and the value of that in different scenarios and actually injecting that into the conversation and the equation he's using to do it all if he's not doing that he's just a hack and i don't know why anybody would take this guy seriously and it right. just shows he's got no real life experience. And my advice to anybody is don't listen to anybody with no real life experience. Yeah. And I want to keep calling him out for his Marxist envy, right? Because they always, <laughs> it says a lot about uh, a person. Yeah. The names that they call you are always projection, right? Yeah. So notice how when they criticize infinite banking, they always have to jump to the scarcity mentality. They always have yeah. to jump to well, you're just a greedy life insurance agent chasing after a commission. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. the fact that you accuse me of that before going into any argumentation says a lot more about you than it does mm -hmm. about me. What it says is I'm a parasite. I view everything as a win-lose proposition. And so I'm now going to project that onto you. So when you promote a financial strategy, I'm just going to assume you're just greedy, grubby, seeking after money. Me, on the other hand, if you have an alternate financial strategy, we can engage in a debate. And uh -huh. I'm happy, like, here's the other thing too. I always learn. When someone sure. promotes an alternative financial strategy, even if I don't agree with it, I usually end up learning something and I'm appreciative of that. And I do not assume this person has evil motives because I think most people don't have evil motives. And I don't think it's evil to make money, right? Like if you make profits, that is a good thing. It also tells I mean, me I this guy so. doesn't understand how difficult it is to start a business, especially a business selling whole life insurance, right? Yep. Like it's not money growing on trees. You don't see whole life insurance cackling madly and gleefully rubbing their gold coins together, right? I mean, yep. you know, we have to contend with ridiculous arguments like this. So yep. no, it's not evil to make money. No. It's a good thing to make money. The only way That's you make one of the thing is by adding one, a lot of value. Yeah, it's one of the reasons I love whole life insurance is that like you're partnering with the life insurance company. So when you take a loan, whatever interest rate you're paying them, is going to effectively help your own policy. You know that the interest rate is going to be relevant to the dividend that you're paying or that to the dividend that you're earning. And so yep. it's 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 always fair. It's always equitable. It's always like uh, there's always an alignment in value. And so like to me, um, you're not going to find that relationship anywhere else in the financial in the financial world. You know, and it says massive value. profits. To yeah, it says massive profits to the insurance companies. Well, if you have participating whole life with a mutual company, guess who shares in the profits? Uh -huh. You do. You That's do. where that dividend comes from. So if that insurance company massively profits, you do too. That's a good thing, right? Yep. It's a win-win scenario. And then it says yep. high price. Notice he never quantifies this, of course. He can't quantify it. But you yep. know what high price means? High value. I value. I value. That's what it means. You do it right. There's no, yeah. there's no free lunch. To, to yep. I agree with him. There's no free lunch. If you want yep. high value, it's going to have a high price. Of course, of course. If you want low value, go pay a low price. Yep. Get cheap term insurance. Okay. Yeah. With ample commissions. Once again, no, yep. no quantification whatsoever. I'm sure he has no idea 
how commissions work. He's just, this is just a scarcity mindset as always, right? Oh, those evil agents making commissions, right? No, how evil. Okay. You can you can <laughs> We're obviously the- just bad people, Logan. I don't know. Of course, like, of course, of course. I mean, That's evidenced by the fact that you make money, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can reach the same outcome as infinite banking with better results, more liquidity, no risk of a policy lapse tra- triggering a massive tax problem, and more options if you use my alternatives. I get no mm. commission for selling you a product. <laughs> My bias is good information, so come back here and read more articles. Compare that to the biases the promoters of infinity banking receive. Here's the video from infinity banking in this article. Yeah, he he says it wrong, of course. And notice, I love that the title of the video is not "Here's how infinite banking works" or "Infinite banking is the coolest thing since sliced bread." Right? No, I just try to simplify it. Five mistakes people make with infinite banking. Yeah, that's the title of the video. That doesn't sound to me like someone who is promoting infinite banking. That doesn't sound to me like a video that's intended to explain what the infinite banking concept is. It sounds more like a cautionary tale about infinite banking, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm a believer in properly leveraged whole life insurance. Like, I I agree that the infinite banking concept is there's, I mean, it's, it's a person who is an amazing guy who made a huge impact in the world by coming up with a marketing concept and philosophy and strategy to leverage a product that is like, has been able to be used for, uh, for 150 years. Right. Like, so it's like the, the, the idea and the strategies are old, but like, you know, the community and the guy who, you know, God bless him. Like, took the time and dedicated his life to educating people about the power of this because of the impact it made in his life. That's you're talking from the seventies that that really happened. You know what I mean? So like, that's a, a small window of time as far as like this thing being marketed quote unquote versus, you know, how long people have been actually doing it. Right. And so like anything else though, it's, it's, it's kind of like velocity banking. Like there's a strategy using a, a line of credit, That's been around for a long time. People have been doing it for a long time, but it takes a person to come up with a way to market it and to get it out there to the world and like, you know, really start marketing it to people to, to, to implement it. And that helps people in different situations in life. And like you said earlier, in all situations, there's always going to be bad actors and, and people that misrepresent it. But I always kind of say like, just because there are people uh, with infinite banking uh, that you've got to be cautious of people that are kind of giving half truths about things, people trying to tell you that you can use index universal life to, to do infinite banking stuff of that nature. Yeah. You got to be cautious about these people and take time to really understand it. Um, but you know, you got to be cautious about people like this guy too, like doing a hack job hit piece. And I, I, I hope whoever's watching this, I hope you share it with the guy and I challenge him to a live debate, you know, talking about it. Like let's, Logan and I would love to do a conversation with him on this, on a live forum, talking about his strategies versus ours and the good, the bad, the ugly on all of them. I believe, and I know Logan does too, in 100% transparency and 100% education. You should never put your money into anything you don't understand, period, including whole life insurance. You know, right. Right. Uh, I'm probably the worst salesperson in the world in that sense, because like I talk more people out of. I, uh, out of uh, whole life insurance and into convertible term policies because they're not ready for whole life insurance yet. They just need to get their death benefit in place. But the goal is to convert it to a whole life policy because from a long-term perspective, that's going to guarantee the result. And that's the question is what problem are we trying to solve? Yep. And I'm sorry, but I just have to hammer this again. Yep. Uh, notice how he says... Um, I get no commission for selling you a product. So once again, yep. this is a scarcity mindset. This is Marxism. It's evil to make money. Okay. <laughs> My bias is good information. So again, he's completely unbiased. The only thing he's trying to yep. do is give you good information, Chris. Right. Yep. Okay. Well, Nothing obviously to sell we're, biased. You. we're all biased. Okay. Let's just and- be honest about it. We all buys it. Well, now he says he's not selling you anything. Now let me scroll up. This is his website. Hmm. Look at that. Chris, I think this is an advertisement here on his website. Ah, uh, he's selling I think something. If I click on that, he's, he's probably going to make some money. To, he's huh. trying to sell you his services. 
So interesting. And also, look, you can sign up for his email list. Chris. Oh, he's not that, running a business, is he? I bet he could make money off of you that way. Oh. Right? But yeah. wait, I thought he was Mother Teresa. I thought yeah. he's just he's just here and you know well you know what and the and the the ironic part about that is logan and i don't know how long you've been following my channel but like from 2016 to 2023 i didn't have a license i couldn't sell anybody anything all the content that i made from 2016 to 2023 was basically just me sharing what i believe because we do these strategies ourselves and you know like it is what it is. And before you 2016, you weren't a greedy life insurance agent just hunting a commission. Before, before 2016, I was licensed. Oh, um, right. And because of a lawsuit and because of a, a non disclosure agreement, I had to give up my license if I wanted to keep talking and, and exposing some of the truths about the industry I wanted to. So I gave up my license to just be able to share the information. And that's what inspired me to originally create the YouTube channel is sharing that information. I couldn't sell for six years and everything I did was just about giving information in a genuine, pure way. Now, I'm not shy to say I sell life insurance now and because I believe in it. You know, I got my license again, the statute of limitations ended on my whole deal and, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, money follows value. And I think the thing about that I love about life insurance is the money that I make is directly correlated correlated to the the value and impact that I made in people's lives because we do it the right way. And uh, I can't think of another area that allows us to to be able to make that statement as boldly and as strongly as we do here. So that's why I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. The more so. money you make, the more value you provide. It's exactly, exactly the opposite of what this guy is saying. So, exactly. uh, wow, I can go on forever. Awesome, uh, Chris, do you have anything you want to leave our audience with in closing? No, I mean, I think that's, I, I, I think... Uh, I, I just go back to and reiterate what I said before. Never put your money into anything you don't understand. That includes this, but work with somebody, whether it's Logan or my team or somebody else like that, like make sure you work with somebody that really is willing to take you down an educational journey, ask critical questions, work through it in your life, see what it would look like, get really comfortable with all the different scenarios, realize that it's not just a product that's going to solve your problems. It's how you behave with the product. It's how you act. And it's who you become in the process to actually accomplish the goals that you want to accomplish. And so, and it's a journey. There's no financial product that's going to solve all your problems unless you die. Then this is a great one, but please don't die. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Chris, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. I hope that's we it. can do a lot more of these. This we was will. fun. And we'll see if it this was. guy's up for a debate. We'll see if that happens. Let's do it. All right. God bless everyone. Bye-bye.